Through the power of art, we will be able to bring new consciousness into this world. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 33 of Paradigm Shift Radio. For this episode, we welcomed on conscious female rapper Kelly Mays onto the show to take part in the paradigm shifting discussion. Kelly is bravely and boldly speaking her truth and expressing herself through music, implementing things related to self betterment and spirituality. You can download her music for free off her website at kellymays.com. That's K E L L E E M A I Z E.com. On this episode, we touched upon numerous topics, such as her own spiritual awakening process, a breakdown of her Ten Commandments, and a very interesting visitation experience she had that evidently helped her move forward on her path. Paradigm Shift Radio is more than just a radio show, it's a branch of Paradigm Shift Central, which is a hub for a global network of communities across the world working together to be the change we wish to see. All the main links are at www.paradigmshiftcentral.com and join PSR on Facebook at facebook.com slash paradigmshiftradio. Live every Saturday for new community-oriented episodes that you too can be a part of. Like and share this episode, check out Kelly's music, and enjoy the show. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you're tuned in for another consciousness shifting episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. This is your host, Brendan, aka Skull Babylon, broadcasting live across the internet from home base, Central Command, here in my bedroom in London, Ontario, Canada. So just a quick shout out to everybody who's tuned into the show. I know we're obviously going to have a lot of new listeners tonight with us because we got a really good special guest, and that's Kelly Mays, and she's a conscious female rapper, and a very popular one of that. If you were to ever just Google the the term female female rapper, her website will come up, up at the top. So feel free to do that. Feel free to check out her website while you're listening to the show. She's got plenty of free music on her website and a lot of consciousness shifting art that she's getting out there into the mainstream culture. So Kelly Mays is available on the website kellymays.com. So that's K-E-L-L-E-E-M-A-I-Z-E. So dot com. Check that out. And just for a little bit of you, uh, in terms of community news, just for those of you who may not be too familiar with Paradigm Shift Radio, Paradigm Shift Radio is a show that we do live every Saturday on behalf of ParadigmShiftCentral.com, which is another website which you can check out live right now while you're listening to the show. So ParadigmShiftCentral.com. And what Paradigm Shift Radio is, Paradigm Shift Radio is a media branch of Paradigm Shift Central. And Paradigm Shift Central is a global collective of communities across the world that are encouraging open-mindedness, healthy living, and the evolution of consciousness. So within these communities, we try to not only educate ourselves, but also to try to bring more conscious, inspiring, and love-filled ideas into our local communities, which is something we'll be talking about within the first couple minutes of the show as we bring on a little bit of a preliminary guest before we actually bring on Kelly. So Again, check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com for all the information there. Like I said, my name is Skull Babylon, and I do all of the uh, media technical side of the stuff there. And I'm also a filmmaker, and you can check out a lot of the I've been putting up there. This whole Paradigm Shift thing started off as a single club in my college about four years ago. And since then, like I said, it's evolved into a global network. And it's something that we want more people to get involved with, which is why a show like this is so important. Because as we reach out to new listeners, we want to be able to encourage them to get involved, to, to be able to start a Paradigm Shift community in their area. And it's not something that you have to ask for permission to do. It's something that you just choose to do. If, if you feel it's in your heart, if you feel it's that calling to be able to build the tribe where you are, then consider starting Paradigm Shift Community. And, and you can get some tips and tricks on how to do that by visiting facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central. And there's some tips and tricks on the top there just in one of the pinned up links. So check that out and consider consider you, like, you have the total opportunity to get started. But if you need any help, Feel free to message us and we'll be able to help get things rolling for you on your end. And also, if you have not yet, like Paradigm Shift Radio on Facebook. That's a separate Facebook page. So Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. And that's where you'll see all of the interesting shows that we got coming up for you in the coming weeks. And I'll just mention this now. The show that we're going to be having next week is going to be bringing on our guest, 
Nathaniel Solis, a.k.a. Mahanomi. So a lot of you are familiar with his work. He does a lot of stuff on YouTube, and he's also part of the Elevate crew, which is part of who we had on the show last week. So one thing that I do want to mention, because this is really important, for those of you who are listening to the show last week, you'll know that we were talking about a film called Be Brave. And Be Brave is a film about a man named Daniel Northcott, and he sadly passed away, but his sister is vowing to finish the film that he started. And in order to be able to do that, they're looking for funds to be able to help complete the project and actually get this film into theaters across the world. So you can actually help with this by going to the Indiegogo website, and I'll post a link for that in the live chat once my browser actually starts working. I'm getting a couple of glitches on my ear, but no worries. And uh, check out the Indiegogo website for the Be Brave campaign, because they're in the final hour of their campaign. They're actually looking to raise about $180,000, which is expected when it gets to inception costs and being able to help pay the editors to be able to go through all the footage that's out there. So go to Indiegogo.com uh, sorry, Indiegogo.com slash B hyphen brave. So Indiegogo is spelled I N D I I N D I E G O G O G O dot com slash B hyphen brave. So like I said, I'm just going to post that into the live chat right there. Someone actually did it for me. So perfect. All right. So again, check that out when you get a chance because it is in the final hours. And if you can just contribute even something as simple as $25, select the perk that's going to let you download the film once it's released. The best, that's, I think that's the best perk that you can get. And, and it's obviously going to be able to help support the film. So feel free to do that. It's going to be greatly appreciated by all the people involved in the project. And that's an extension of what we're doing here. That film is going to help bring consciousness into this world, which is essentially what we are doing through Paradigm Shift Radio, through the Paradigm Shift communities, through the fact that you are listening to the show right now. So by you listening to the show, you are taking part in the shift in global consciousness. So thank you by listening, because listening is the first step towards learning. So excuse me one second. Now, like I said, just in terms of community news, I'd actually like to be able to bring on uh, a good friend of ours named Alon, and Alon's actually with what is pretty much Paradigm Shift Israel. Now, they don't technically call themselves that, but uh, just because there's a bit of a translation issue, but I know Alon's been actually having a lot of success with the stuff that he's been doing within his community. So before we bring Kelly onto the air, we're going to bring Alon onto the air. So Alon, if you're ready, you're gonna bring, we're going to bring you onto the air and just give us a little bit of an update on how things are unfolding on your end. So Alon, if you're ready, here we go. Hello, Hello Alon. Can you good hear me? Morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. That's right. It's uh, 6 a.m. over there, isn't it? Yeah, it's 6 a.m. right now. Me and uh, Avi, my friend, the uh, uh, partner for the job, uh, we're here. We got up and we're excited to be on the show. Awesome, man. Awesome. awesome. So what what is it? That, what news do you have to share that uh, you guys, uh, I know you guys have been doing a lot of stuff, even getting out there with the free hugs and even making t-shirts and stuff. And uh, actually, I was just going to say, can you guys put on headphones? Can you guys share a set of headphones? Um, we'll try. We'll try, uh, um, just making the voice, your voice a little. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gonna reverb, but, uh, I'm just, okay, okay, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop talking, and you tell me what's new with, uh, the community that you got going uh, on over there, so. Okay, um, so, we, uh, I'm just gonna tell everybody, we had the free, free hug session, the first free hug session in, in December, um, uh, pretty much before someone, before the 21st which we, I talked to in your show in the 20th episode. And after a couple of times we did a free hug, we decided to follow your steps. Uh, and we got inspiration from Paradigm and from Paradigm Shift. And we, we thought that we should get this free hug into something like pretty much more professional, put, put a name, put a name above it and call it. Um, we thought, what name should it be? We thought about Paradigm Shift, but that, like you said, the translation thing was a problem. So we call it B, which means um, B being, you know, being the change I want to see in the world, like Gandhi said. And plus in Hebrew, the funny thing is that B in Hebrew letters means in me, like the change is in me. Mm. So it, it really connected to, to, the, to the idea. And we had, um, uh, we, we made the play on the 25th of December, which was a real coincidence. <laughs> and, and then from then on, in a month, we did like um, eight, six, or seven free hug sessions uh, in three cities, different cities in, in Israel. And it was, it was great success. Like people came up after us all over, uh, everywhere we go. We had 
great pictures, great videos, and we're just we're really on our toes right now. We're just starting to to crawl, and it's gonna be great. It's a great future for us. For sure, man. Yeah. That that's good. And uh, can you mute? Oh, this is gonna be weird because you guys don't have. Oh, we're not making sure. but uh, just hold on. Just uh, I was gonna say because I mean we, we don't have to be on the air for too long here. But for anybody who's interested, check out Alon's group's website at facebook.com/slash/belight.love. So check that out, and we'll post the link into the show notes as well. And again, for those of you who are listening to the show for the first time, every episode that we do here will also go up onto YouTube as well, and they'll have all the show notes, and you'll be able to check that out and share that even further. So. Alon, I appreciate you stopping by, and uh, I just do for technical difficulties, I'm not really going to get too drawn out into a conversation here, but you're welcome to join us into the uh, after party that I'm sure we'll be having once this episode wraps up. So, uh, Alon, thank you again for, for joining us, and uh, we'll yes, talk to you later, man. Just one, just one, copy, just one last thing Go ahead. I want to say. Go ahead. Um, I'm posting now in live chat um, a video we did, and you can also check it out for all the people. And I want, just want to say a shout out to all the people listening to Paradigm Shift Radio. You're awesome. And Skull, you're awesome. <laughs> we love you. You're a big inspiration to all of us. And check out our page and see the pictures and, and, uh, and spread the good vibes. You know, go, go free hug someone. <laughs> love you all. <laughs> For sure, man. All right. Cheers, Alon. Take care. Peace. All right. So again, that was Alon from Paradigm Shift Israel, if you want to call them that. But again, Facebook.com slash belight.belove is their page. But you can check out all the Paradigm Shift Central communities that are up and running and the ones that are emerging at ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash directory. Go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com. You'll find all the links there throughout the website that you need, including a new part of the page that I put up with the that answers the question, who is Skull Babylon? So I myself am Skull Babylon. But for those of you who may not be familiar, go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash Skull Babylon, and that will give you a bit of a background on who I am and also a huge selection of a bunch of the videos that I've put up, including two full movies about uh, relating to consciousness shifting material, including one called Three Days of Light, which was about a transformational festival that I attended back in November. And for those of you who are interested, please feel free to donate to Paradigm Shift Central and as well as the future projects funds that I have. And you can do that all through the main website. And even if every person listening to the show would just donate $1, that would be a huge contribution. And I think that's really what we need, that we need to be able to work together as a community to be able to make those small little micro transactions because i mean what is one dollar from each of our pockets right but if we have x number of people listening then those one dollars add up and that money is going right back into paradigm shift central and being able to help shift consciousness across the world and being able to help get those messages out there so again paradigmshiftcentral.com slash skull babylon and i got a gofundme page on there too so you can check that out add me on facebook subscribe to my youtube and keep in touch because this is something that we're going to be doing every week and we look forward to having you join us in the process of doing so now with that said let me just make sure i got a glass of water here so i think it's about time that we will be welcoming on kelly onto the show and I'll just say this now, we will be doing a synchronized global meditation later in the show for those of you who aren't too familiar with how we do things here at Paradigm Shift Radio. And that will be at about 12.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is the time zone that we're in right now. So about 90 minutes into the show. And Kelly's actually going to be leading us in that meditation. So that's going to be a very, very cool thing. So without further ado, we're going to bring Kelly onto the air. Oh, and one more thing. We will be welcoming callers onto the show after the meditation. So just to give you a heads up on that, if you would like to be able to be on on the air with us and even ask a question to Kelly, whether you be new to her work or whether you be one of her fans who are listening into the show right now. Just keep that in mind because you will have that chance later in the show. And the number to call in, you can find it through the link that you're listening to on Blog Talk. Just scroll up to the link and you, you'll see the host number there and you can call in using Skype or off a regular phone. So whatever works for you. All right, guys. So with that said, we're going to bring Kelly onto the air. So Kelly, if you are ready, we're going to get this ball rolling. Here we go. Hello, Kelly. You're with us. Hi. Hey, good to hear you again. All right. So, <laughs> welcome to the show. So, Kelly, now, I mean, I could go out of my way and sort of do a bit of an introduction here. And uh, and if that's and just to sort of do that, I'll just um, let me see. OK, this is literally off of Wikipedia. So I'm just going to give a little bit of a background for those people who may not be familiar with who you are. And then I'll let you do a little bit more of an expanded introduction and, to, and tell us from your own words who you are. So 
This is right off of Wikipedia for everybody listening. So Kelly Mays is an American rapper, singer, and songwriter. Her first album, Age of the Feminine, was released in 2007. Since then, she has released three more albums, Aligned Archetype and Integration and Owl Time. Mays has been involved in the music business just over a decade and has recorded and released three full albums, leading to a handful of singles. As of 2011, her YouTube videos have combined for over 2 million views, and she has over 70,000 Twitter and Facebook fans. Her albums have been downloaded over 400,000 times, and she has been mentioned in various media outlets over 200 times. And I'm sure those numbers have actually gone up since those uh since that wikipedia article was written and uh so that's who kelly is in terms of wikipedia but there is a lot more to her obviously and that's really what we're going to get into for this show so kelly just in your in your own words like who are you as an artist what are you trying to bring into this world um who am i well uh (laughs) i guess as an artist i would say um that's such a hard question to answer (laughs) <laughs> I feel like I'm, di- you know, I feel like I'm evolving all the time, so mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to, um, you know, label myself in any particular way. But um, I'm just trying to share uh, myself and the things that um, inspire me and have helped me and have, um, you know, le- things that I've learned that I think would be valuable to other people. Um, mm-hmm through art and um, community action and, um, you know, all that good stuff. For sure, for sure, yeah. And uh, what what I think is interesting is the title that we have for the episode tonight is uh, Bohemian Spiritual Rap. Now, the term Bohemian, (laughs) I think, is actually probably the most accurate thing that we can sort uh, sort of assign to you as terms of, like, who you are. So, for those of you unfamiliar, the word Bohemian, I mean, there's a few definitions for it, but uh, if you were to take one of them, it would be referring to a person or an, an such as an artist who lives and acts free of regard of conventional rules and practice. And I, and I think that's really what you do in, in terms of the music that you put out there, because the music that you talk about, I mean, the subject matter that you talk about has a lot of like paradigm shifty topics, which is obviously why I wanted to be able to like reach out with you and get to be and get to, in touch with you, because there's so many topics that you are bringing into your work that are just helping infiltrate these ideas into the mainstream. You know, you you openly talk about your spiritual, you know, your spiritual practices, like your meditation, and your lyrics refer to things like relating to like kundalini and chakras and and third eyes and and this and that. So I think that in itself is, is really cool. So just in terms of helping people sort of like understand, like who were you kind of growing up that sort of like led you to who you are now? Like have you always been sort of like, I guess outspoken or just kind of like theatrical. Did you have that sort of trait at a young age? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I actually say this all the time that my because my it comes from my mother and um, just kind of describes a lot. I think she said that before I could actually you know walk and talk that I was singing and dancing and she would put the um, like MTV on and that I would like pull myself up to a coffee table and just shake my butt (laughs) and you know so I've just sort of always been I guess um you know related to music in some way and um I'm adopted and I think I I learned that at a very young age um my parents never I always I sort of grew up knowing it and so I think that that um you know I didn't know anybody else that was adopted so I think that sort of also had a pretty big impact on me early on um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I find it it's always interesting because I mean, we, when we sort of think back on who we were when we were younger, there was always sort of like clues as to who we were going to be in in, in a lot of ways. So I mean, yeah, there's it, it's it's just interesting to sort of always be able to like look back on ourselves and to just be like, yeah, yeah, you know, like it it makes sense that I was who I was then and I am who I am now. But it's always like this evolving mm-hmm. process and and understanding that like who we are in a month from now is not who we are right now so to be able to like accept and embrace the fact that like we're constantly changing like change is the constant thing like in this universe so i think that's really cool and um i just actually i I have a small excerpt and this is actually off of uh the amazon page for for your book integration which i think is something that 
we'll talk a little bit about later. But I think this paragraph actually is something that would be a really good way to sort of sum up who and what you do. So I'm just going to read that. So Kelly's poetic rap is grounded in feminist spirituality and is a new voice in today's evolving hip hop world. Her take on life is that we are all made of the same energy and therefore are one, that we are all that we are standing on the brink of realizing our oneness and that our music and our art will usher in a peaceful revolution. Awesome. Yeah, I think I think that's I think that should be on Wikipedia. That should be the first paragraph on Wikipedia. You know, when people like look it up, I think that's what they need need to know because I mean, when what what we're doing here on Paradigm Shift Radio is constantly it's part of this bigger story, and 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 your music is part of this bigger story. It's this process of the unity that we're all coming into awareness of. So I mean, just talk a, a let's talk a little bit more about that. Like I mean, how important is it for you for people to be able to like see the oneness within everything Mm -hmm. um i think it's um i think it's really valuable um on different levels um from even just like you know we all have an ego and we all um have a brain that works in a particular fashion and um it can be pretty hard to be human sometimes and i think uh it's valuable to realize um, even on that level that we're all one and just the idea that, you know, um, you're never really alone in the way that you deal with things and the struggles that we all go through. Everybody experiences them. And I think we tend to forget that and sort of, you know, fall into either, you know, victimization or self-pity or feeling dominating over another person when in truth, you know, we all, um, are dealing with the same sort of set of, um, I guess, context that we live in, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And then even, you know, as you sort of talk about it, then up to like a spiritual level, you know, we are indeed all made of the same energy. Um, Our cells look exactly the same under a microscope. We're all, you know, part of the same universe. So I think it's really important to think of it and also to think about, um, even in that oneness so that we all have a special um, message or uh, gift or however you want to, um, you know, vocalize it. But it's it's something that's very powerful and 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 different between, every you know, every individual. And I think that's, like, what the purpose of us all being here is really expressing, you know, what's important to us and what we care about. Mm-hmm. I think that's, you know, the other thing that kind of, also makes us one is that everybody has that, you know, that thing inside them that they want to share, want to do, or want to experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I mean, a lot of people, um, I mean, I'm just kind of like reading some stuff going on in, in the live chat, actually. And, uh, you know, the word feminist, Come, comes up uh, but but I mean what we're talking about here because I mean the title that we have for the show is Rise of the Divine Feminine but I mean as I'm sure uh, I'd like you to actually be able to explain like what does that mean to you like the term Rise of the Divine Feminine um, well I mean it, it, to me it refers to um, feminine energy it's not so much a woman or a, a goddess or uh, all women or something. I mean, I, I think that's maybe a part of it, but it's really um, kind of a feminine right brain aspect within all human beings. Um, the part of us that hasn't so much been nurtured in the last, you know, 5,000 or so plus years of kind of a patriarchal um, society. And I think that it's obvious that there is an imbalance of pretty, um, serious and complex imbalance that is created when we aren't honoring all sides of not just our brain, but, um, you know, what that means in terms of family relationships and government and um, education. I mean, it it affects every part of society when you aren't honoring uh, the feminine aspects of, you know, cooperation over competition and um, you know, working together as opposed to dominating. And um, I think that that's the way that I see it is that there is, an, we're at this point of just being, it's so clear that there is an imbalance that the only, you know, the only thing to do is to start 
recognizing what's missing. And I think that the feminine within all, the right brain within all is what is what is really missing from the equation to actually, you know, evolve us beyond this sort of survival fight or flight kind of mm-hmm. space that, you know, that we've been in. Yeah, yeah. And and I think what you're doing through your music is such a very inspirational thing. And I'm sure all, so many people who have heard your music would agree to this fact that like they can look up to a person such as yourself as a role model because you're living your life and, and you're doing it with such courage. And especially when you think about the fact that like mainstream hip hop culture is a very male dominated thing. What's it been like for you sort of entering into that sphere like as a female and to do it like so courageously? Like you must have gotten some like, I mean, there's must have been like sort of positives and negatives that you've sort of been able to experience in the process, I imagine. Is that not the case? Or? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I was just in a, in a panel um, last weekend talking about the same thing. I hadn't really thought about this particular thing in a while, um, but it's come up quite a bit in the last, like, month or so. Um, I think for me it was not as... Um, difficult maybe as it might have been for many or might be for many other women uh, just due to the fact that I'm in a community that's um, very supportive and it's fairly small and as far as cities go um, in terms of the scene um, I was always involved in the scene from kind of the my first um, you know my late teens is when I moved to Pittsburgh and I was kind of always going to hip-hop shows and then um, involved in the um, alternative Newsweekly that's here, the city paper, as well as um, the University of Pittsburgh radio station. So I was just always, like, doing things that kept me involved, and I was supporting other people's shows and planning shows and creating opportunities for other people. And um, so I think, like, I kind of, because I was helping other people, I tended to get um, that in return, you know, you give what you get, I suppose. And um, so I didn't really feel as much of a um, difficulty that others may have felt. And in addition, I was like entrepreneurial, you know, mm-hmm. in spirit. I started my own company. So I just sort of like found ways to like once I started, you know, sort of pushed into my music and by people around me just sort of continually encouraging me and whatnot. And so when I took it the more and more I took it seriously it was like you know not that hard when I was ready to release my album I knew the studios to record at I was friends with the DJs I was you know had already planned events at many of the venues that I wanted to do shows at or had the connections already sort of made so it was maybe a little easier for me than than someone that um, wouldn't have started that way Um, It took me a lot longer to to get to this point, though. Um, So, you know, I suppose it's different for every person. But but as far as just, you know, being a woman in general, my my company is all all women. Um, The group that I've started that I've been touring with is primarily women, although I love men and have lots of super unbelievably awesome men in my life that are a part of what I'm doing. But... um, I would say that I have felt, you know, various levels of um, sexism and misogyny and all those things in my, you know, performing or just dealing with, you know, club owners or online. Of course, there's all kinds of comments and things like that. But oh, yeah. I, you know, but for the most part, I, I would say that the good definitely outweighs the bad and. I think whatever you focus on tends to expand, and I really have never given much of that my attention um, Mm -hmm. for the most part. So, um, but I, but I, you know, I'm very aware of of the um, of you know the difficulties of being a woman in this world, and and talk about that in my music, and feel as if I need to be a stand for women who maybe didn't have the opportunities that I've had, and didn't um, you know get the type of support that I got. I, I want to, you know, be aware that that that's, doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, all the ladies have it the way that they should. 
Yeah, yeah. Like a big part of your story is the fact that you are an independent artist and you're proving that like you can sort of, you know, achieve this sustainable living as an independent artist and to do it, it like we said, like in this sort of like very male dominant uh music sphere is just a very very empowering thing once again. And uh you know, and I think with any sort of case in life, like you, you sort of said it, it's a matter of whether or not we sort of put our attention on the positive or the negative. Because, I mean, the negatives are always going to be there and we're always going to have those obstacles. But in a lot of cases, like those obstacles are what's going to make us stronger. So, I mean, you know, you can consider like every great challenge is just training for the next one. So, I mean, like obviously, mm-hmm. like through everything that you've been through, you know maybe a a lesser person might have just like given up but you persevered and like that says a lot and and the fact that like you're still going and you know there's no end in sight in terms of like your your involvement with uh with the art that you're doing and i think that's a really really cool part of your story as well now just in terms of um sort of shifting here towards like the the spirituality side of uh the art that that you express because uh, we talked about this a, a little bit uh earlier off air um let's just sort because of, everybody sort of has like their own sort of a spiritual awakening process um now just from using like your without me having really to say anything can you just sort of like tell us a bit about like your own process of awakening so to speak and and how that sort of mm-hmm. integrated itself into the art that you express Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I guess, um, well, so one of the things that I, that I talked to you about was, um, earlier was that my, uh, grandfather was a minister. And so I grew up, um, you know, for, even from an early age kind of going to church, but it was a reformed church. It was a very, very, a reform of a reformed church. So it was very, um, open. It wasn't, uh, a ton of um, restrictive, restrictive sort of um, religious practice or anything like that, or doctrine necessarily any um, literal doctrine kind of following. But it was definitely like a part of my life. And I, at the same time, I was also told a lot of interesting stories about my grandfather. This is my mother's father. He's uh, passed away, but I was told about his. Um, he would, you know, do the Ouija board and, you know, in the, um, like in the church house that he lived in with all the kids that my mom, he had five kids. Um, so it was just sort of a strange thing, you know, and many, many churches see the, the Ouija board as the devil, you know, so it was something that I grew up thinking about and hearing stories, just really crazy paranormal stories about that um my mother always watched really really scary movies and i would you know peek through the um (laughs) through the door sometimes and so i i had a lot of interesting influences in that way and then at the same time um i also knew that he was a real humanitarian he was an aquarius and i just remember you know a lot of kind of talk about you know accept everyone and love everyone and you know those sorts of things is something that I certainly grew up with and he passed away when I was um, seven and that was actually a really um, pivotal memory I I remember it very clearly of his passing and how it affected my family Um, and I also was learning you know I knew I was adopted and nobody that I knew pretty much throughout my entire childhood, adolescence, teenager, etc. I didn't know anybody else that was adopted. So I had somewhat of um, a sort of alien kind of feeling about, you know, like I wasn't like other kids. Um, I was very aware of um, things that most people don't think about, like conversations about, um, you know, your health history or, you know, the story about your birth or, um, you know, I'm Irish, I'm Italian, whatever, all those sorts of conversations that tend to be quite common and people don't think about, but as an adopted child, you don't, you know, you don't know those things. You don't know those answers. So you're sort of reminded of it um, pretty frequently. And so I think that opened me in a way um, to trying to understand, you know, where you come from, why things are the way they are. Um, Certainly a pretty big issue with self-worth came up a lot and, throughout my life and kind of continues to come up in different ways now. So, um, 
I think that that left me questioning everything and questioning the nature of life. And um, when I was 17, my other grandfather passed away, and I had a very small family at that point in terms of, like, immediate, like, people that I would spend holidays with, et cetera. And it was just my aunt, my mother, my father, my grandfather, my dad's dad. And um, when he passed away, I was just really, um, for, you know, and generally I was just really depressed. I was um, kind of, you know, drowning it in various, uh, you know, alcohol and smoking weed, and I was just really... um, not capable of dealing with it, I guess you could say. I didn't like the idea that I would never see him again. I didn't understand how to, you know, live in my family without him around and all that good stuff. He was just a huge influence. And I remember being um, in a my most vivid memory at that time. And it's weird because my most vivid memory, childhood memory, was when my one grandfather died. My next vivid would, would be this story, which was essentially that I was, um, at the beach uh, weeks after my grandfather passed on like a vacation with a boyfriend at the time and I just remember I, my head was sort of like you know at late I had my head in my hands and I was just like so present to this loss that I was feeling and I said you know aloud more or less if you know if my grandfather really is out there if there's really more to this than you know lights out it's over I'm never going to see him again I'm never going to I have you know it's it's over like what's the point in life why why am I here and I just sort of asked for a sign and I had my head down and I looked up and a lightning bolt like I mean literally a lightning bolt came out of my right eye and just went directly into the sky above the shoreline and broke into like I mean I've never seen lightning like this ever in my whole life it was just thousands of um, bolts going in different directions and it was so bright and lasted for so long that I actually you know turned my head to the left and I saw the entire shoreline all the houses the amusement park I turned to the right, I saw the shoreline and all the homes and hotels to that side. I mean, it was a long time. And everybody that was there was probably six people, and they were all just, like, screaming, like, oh, my God, oh, my, you know, just, like, cause they all, you know, it was, it was real. It wasn't, like, in my yeah. head or some, you know, hallucination or anything. It was really just the most unbelievable lightning bolt I actually should ask my I'm still friends with my boyfriend at the time I should ask him if he remembers that yeah but um anyway so that was just this this really and it was so like I felt just such an intense amount of joy and and relief that it it wasn't like I thought oh that was my grandpa for sure I'm gonna see him or anything you know sort of solid but I just knew that that meant that I was not supposed to give up and that there was more to this than, you know, or here we die and life is a bitch in between or whatever. Yeah, really. Yeah. (laughs) You know. I've never I've I've never heard of a case like that of someone having a lightning shoot out of their eye. Like, that is... (laughs) Like, but hey, you know, in, in this in this realm of infinite possibilities, like nothing's off the table, so to speak. So, I mean, that is that's quite the story in itself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And and I'm sure, yeah, you know, like just from there, like that that's one of those moments that you really just don't forget because, like, it's so so visceral in, in a lot of ways. And, mm-hmm. and obviously, like from then, you know, sort of like the story continued to unfold and then so as we were talking about, you began to get like more into like your spiritual practices and like being able to like work with the ego within yourself and like meditation and everything. So I mean all these parts and all these aspects that definitely worked its way into uh your your music in the future, and no doubt. Now what I'd actually like to be able to do, just be able to share a little bit more of your music with the people listening here. I just want to be able to play uh, a little bit of uh a clip from your song Revival of the Fifth Sun. And then let's just sort of talk about that one. Like that one I think is uh like when was that one released? song um i'm not 100 percent sure it feels like about 
about a couple two years, years ago. ago but it, yeah. Yeah, it could have been more like three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> time flies. So, okay, cool. So Kelly, we'll do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna play that song, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the lyrics. So for everybody okay, who's awesome. listening, just stay tuned and uh, enjoy this uh, this sample of the track. So this is Kelly Mays on Paradigm Shift Radio, and this is Revival of the Fifth Sun. So here we go. Sending this one out to all the ladies and my girls at Nocturnal. Grab your journal. It's eternal. See if you can feel this. The fear isn't out there, no my, it's just love. We co-create this pain inside forever. Oh please, you bees, just take a look. A like and change from a person's story, a book. You're hooked, cause ain't no such thing as halfway lifted. The spirits around when the crown opens expansive sound. It's similar to shaman law. Now we all float up and fall and beyond we in control. They better have the gemstones ready. Setting the babies free in my third eye steady. Hand healing is subtle. We touch you. Cells expand. No BS to go home with. My aura is thick. Cause I'll be up in the mix of rapture. Enlightenment. This is what I'm after. The hate got a girl depressed. Wish my ether was an armor to absorb the stress. God bless your soul. The hematite is laid. Now I'm searching for the scroll. Holy grow quilt. The feminine re-enter. Two skills to one put us together. It's like mixing citrine and guilt. Duality is lasting. Taking my enemies with me. And all the outcasts that I will never regret. See, goddess of Zimmy retracted and some confuse it as an act. We've risen, now we can't turn back. This is a fact. Quantum physics is my crack. That I can't say no. I will release the slack. Take a breath. Thank goddess, you're alive. Revival of the fifth sun, yeah. we will survive. Yeah. Yeah. Keep giving love until the day that we die. Revival of the fifth sun, we will survive. All right, so Kelly, we're back now. So that was Revival of the Fifth Song, and that was a really cool song just in, in itself. And so just the title of the song itself, Revival of the Fifth Son, what what does that mean? Um, well, it was just referring to the, the ending of the um, Mayan Fifth Son. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like this idea that, uh, you know, I would hopefully bring to light these ideas uh, in the mainstream world about mm-hmm. the fact that, you know, we're entering a completely new cycle, 26,000-year mm-hmm. cycle. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I mean, just in that small clip alone, like, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, like, the amount of the amount of themes that you brought up into that small clip alone, like, I mean, you know, like, there, you were talking about, like, shaman law, you were talking about third eye steady, like, you were talking about, like, all sorts of, uh, like, hematite and uh, ether as armor and, uh, you know, the feminine and... And the ego and, and all that and quantum physics even it was something that was uh, dropped within the lyrics there. So I mean, I think I think that's really cool. Now I mean just like in a like I'm just trying to think from there. I mean you know one thing sort of branches into everything and there's so much that that we could talk about. But one thing that we didn't really get a chance to talk about off the air and I'm still actually interested in it. And since you mentioned it, it was like this sort of like shift uh, within the mind cycle that obviously like you know was a big deal and and a lot of us have been sort of moving through and everything so kelly what i'm curious is where were you on december 21st 2012 um well before i answer that i just want to uh, pay my respects to mob deep because that that <laughs> beat is actually a is a mob deep beat and it was sort of a um i guess uh yeah an, an honoring of of them so i just want to say that <laughs> um so where was I on December twenty first, twenty twelve? I was in Mexico. I was at um I was just outside of Chichen Itza. And were you taking part in some uh, ceremonies at the time? Yeah, yeah. I was um I was there with um Akta. He is a Mayan um scientist. They call him a walking Maya and he has been more or less walking up and down Mexico for um, over 20 years. And he has a beautiful message and uh, teachings that he shares about um, sacred geometry. And um, I was actually um, a part of uh, sort of, I was actually there on tour with him for an entire, um, the entire 20 days prior to that. So um, we were just sort of fulfilling a lot of the things that he had um you know, channeled through his ancestors that were to happen 
in those days uh, leading up to it as well as um, on the day on the 21st. And I actually had a pretty, um, you know, I expected to be up around the clock and um, be doing a sacred movement that he taught everyone, but I kind of, um, because we had done so much leading up to it, I was sort of off the hook. He actually um, encouraged me to go home and be with my my family, actually, all came in on the 21st. My mother, um, my boyfriend's family, uh, some of my closest friends, so... It was kind of, um, you know, half of it was spent doing uh, ceremony and um, kind of just being in the energy that was Mm -hmm. all around Chichen Itza. And the other half was um, just being around my my family. And the fact that they actually came to Mexico was pretty incredible. So, yeah. That's pretty cool, yeah. And and while you guys were there, you actually, uh, did you film some of the music video for 2012? While you were there, yeah, that, we yeah, yeah we, um, we traveled uh, for for about twenty days, starting on the first of December, and um, we did a lot of um, we went to a couple different uh, archaeological pyramid sites and sacred sites and filmed different parts of um, that video. We also filmed quite a bit of it prior to leaving, like days before we left, mm-hmm. um, and that was put together um, while we were there. And then we released it. Um, I think we released it uh, the day, days leading up to it. I released my album also while I was in Mexico. It was quite insane <laughs> to do all of that while while touring Mexico. But it was really special that the universe aligned and you know everything happened the way that it did. For sure, yeah, it, it usually does. Things have a tendency yeah. to sort of fall into <laughs> place. So once you sort of uh, open up and let go to flow. So, but yeah. I, for those of you, uh, for those of you who are just sort of um, wondering, uh, Kelly did a video called 2012, which talks about uh, the Mayan and, and uh, some a whole bunch of other stuff. But you can actually check that out on her on her website. And uh, actually, maybe that's uh, we, we might as well sort of um, get into. Yeah, I wouldn't mind actually getting into that. Do you want to do you want to play that track now and then talk a little bit about some of the Ten Commandments that you uh, mentioned at the end of the track? Should we do that? Sure. Okay. Sure, okay, cool. Yeah. So we'll we'll do that. So for those of you who haven't actually heard the song, you get a chance to tune into it. It's a really, really cool song. And there's some specific things that Kelly gives a list of at the end, which I think are actually really worth looking into a little bit more. And then from that, I know Kelly's got some other really interesting experiences uh, kind of relating to some sleep paralysis and visitations that she's had that we'll get into after that as well. So for now, we're going to play Kelly's song 2012. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll be back shortly after this. So here we go. been called to write the song to share a message answer the question what do i believe december 21st 2012 means do i think humanity will succeed do i think we will get swallowed by the sea let's trace it to hell and handbag is what we're facing reading capitalism has us replacing want over need products oversee the poor and the weak lead the rich and ignorant feed but there's another message being told not one of doom and glue but our collective power to behold we must Instead, use your heart. It's a community. You know it's all fake. Babylon don't want unity. Put your mind in earthquake. Don't want us to co-create. I've been gathering the girls and owls. We run deep. White buffalo calf. Women leading love. Armies. Red road below feet. We are rainbow warriors. Replacing the warriors. Write a whole new story of hope. Peace in our heart. Be our own product of accelerator and press start. I heard this from a Mohawk Hopi, Navajo, and Aztec indigenous prophecy. Many think we're heading for Atlantis. Mayan message of opportunity resonates. This is a sacred time and place. Keep your mind and intentions positive in these final days. You'll find a craze part of the plan which you dumb, scared, and in a daze. We must unify. But this 
means a shift in consciousness that is depending on our internal and collective ascending into unity that is unending. We may lose power in the final hour. What message are you sending? If you don't dig transcendence, then try these ten commandments. One, be grateful and fun. Love all like never before. Two, forgive all in yourself. Forget, set, let's go. Three, let be, let live. Honor, exchange, accept, give. Four. Transmute fear, just feel it, then let go. Five. Honor feminine within all and let it flow. Six. Like Totec function, don't take it personal or make assumptions. Seven. Seven. Respect Mother Earth and all of nature. Eight. Don't hurt with your worry, it's using your imagination for what you don't want. Nine. Live from your heart and your truth and don't front. Ten. Don't let the voices inside stop ya, you are God. Gotcha. We must unify. We have a tremendous opportunity to shift from the love of power to the power of love. I, for one, will be doing all I can to envision and create the rebirthing of a planet that works for all. Right on. That's some awesome stuff there, Kelly. <laughs> Thank you. Really dig it. So, yeah, I think a lot of what you said there just totally resonates with a lot of the energy that so many people who are tuned into the show are feeling and so many other people are beginning to open themselves up to because it's important for us to be able to have these conversations and to not sort of like, you know, hide off in a corner in the process and to sort of bring these conversations into our public spheres. And, and your music is doing that. I mean, more and more people are seeing it and more and more people are seeing you talk about these topics and they're just like whoa you know i'm gonna start doing my own research and everything so you know we're really uh really being the vanguard here in a, in a lot of ways and really helping be that change that you want to see in the world so some very cool stuff now like i said there's the 10 commandments uh to sort of use that term loosely that you mentioned at the end of the song so i'd just like to sort of be able to walk through each of those and maybe just get you to sort of uh give a little bit more explanation on them even though some of them are obviously pretty straightforward so number one was be grateful and fun or be grateful and have fun and um and like oh okay i, I butchered that what, what's the first commandment kelly uh, it's um be grateful be grateful and fun love all like never before that's right yeah i just missed my commas in there so yeah so i mean that one's yeah. obviously any, anything more you want to say about that one in particular well i mean you'll notice in, in these i mean I, I i chose 10 just to kind of you know um play off of the you know general idea that there are 10 commandments but mm-hmm. really in each of these there is you know <laughs> like seven things sometimes in one yeah so that, but yeah so i mean yeah it's pretty pretty much straightforward in, in that one but you know, says a lot in one in one thing. Because mm-hmm. I think I think the fun part is something that I I personally um, you know always have to focus on and and sure. recognize that cause I'm a pretty serious person and I'm pretty driven and and um, you know tend to just kind of always be focused, always trying to do things and make things happen and what, whatever. And I I sometimes like lose the fun aspect and mm-hmm. obviously living living in the moment. Um, doesn't necessarily mean you're having fun. So mm-hmm. I really try to, um, I had to put that in there for yeah. me if nobody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, we we, we got to do that. We got to be able to bring ourselves back to, you know, almost being able to like see the world through the eyes of a child kind of thing. And, yes. and, and, and not to go too far off topic, but obviously this is something um, that came to my mind earlier because when we were sort of talking about that, you know, I, I think of like the world of like the eyes through like a puppy in particular, like the new mm-hmm. puppy that you just like welcomed into your family. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, and, and actually, I didn't I didn't mention this, but my the other thing that my mom also said about me was that I was like a fifty year old woman in a five year old body. So I also have been been pretty serious my whole life. So in, in a way, I, I actually feel as if I'm as I uh, you know evolve spiritually and as a person, I, I actually think I'm going to the childhood that I you know didn't really. Mm. Um, maybe have in a way. I mean, I, I had like an amazing childhood in terms of my parents were just like super awesome, but I know that I, I definitely took things really, really seriously, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, even as a child, my mom said I was I was just really serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that determination is uh, what got you here to where we are now. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, there's kind of a, a saying, and it's basically uh, we we grow old to learn how to live young, which is yeah. something you know I think some of us need <laughs> so to be reminded true. of that fact. So <laughs> mm-hmm. for sure. Definitely. All but right, yeah, so. the little the little puppy is definitely helping <laughs> me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the little bear. Yeah, Oso. <laughs> so shout out to Oso if he's listening to the show yes. right now. <laughs> right. So yes. number number two on the commandments, and, and now all all of these commandments. I mean, these are like obviously you're you, like you put these together yourself. Like so. Yeah. 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 So number yeah. two mm-hmm. is forgive all of yourself. Is that all right? Was there? Uh, well, it's actually forgive all and yourself. And yourself, yeah. So that's yeah. A big, that's that's pretty important either way. So yeah, just explain a little bit more about what why why you chose that commandment. Um, well, for that, it's forgive all and yourself for the settling scores. Um, because I I think, you know, I I'm, I'm definitely a victim of being very hard on myself, and um, I have for the most part, um, in my life, you know, I don't really hold grudges or, or, um, you know, get really angry with people. I mostly internalize any issues I have, um, for the most part, which, which isn't good either. But, um, I think it's really, really, really important. I've found in forgiving others when I do hold anything against them is so freeing and so important Mm -hmm. and allows you to then forgive yourself. So I think that's, you know, one of the most important things to, you know, creating, like, le- letting go of that barrier that separates, that, you know, fictitiously separates us and yeah. really seeing the oneness that we are is when you can kind of forgive because the fact is that, we're, you know, we're all just doing the best that we know how to do. So yeah. when someone does something that you don't agree with, it's, you know, you really can't um, blame them. It's it's something that, you know, we all, we're all in a learning process together. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, again, another, another saying that fits in with this one is uh, forgiveness is the road to freedom. And I mean, that's yeah. something that I sort of reflect on as well, because, yeah, like like you said, I mean, oftentimes someone will be frustrated and, and they might do something that might bother us. And then our ego might be so quick to judge. But when we sort of step back and realize that, like, this person is acting out this way because of their suffering. So, like, rather than yeah. like, judging them, we should be, like, meeting their frustration with compassion and, and being able to, you know, right away sort of put away the differences. And, yeah, and that's how, you know, that's how we sort of change the world one one little interaction at a time, I think. So Absolutely. Very important. I couldn't so. agree more. Yeah, these mm-hmm. are, all these commandments are, like, things that, for you, the listeners, like, bring these into, like, your day-to-day life. So if you need to, go back, listen to the show, listen to Kelly's song again, and just... Be mindful of these because these are very, very practical suggestions. So number mm-hmm. three on the list is uh, now, again, I didn't put the, my commas in. So tell me, what's number three on the list? Yeah, um, number three is uh, let be, let live, honor, exchange, accept, give. Yeah. And um, that was just kind of, I mean, I made it sound really general because I think you can apply it to, you know, whether you're talking about yourself, you're talking about your friends, you're talking about your family, or you're talking about animals, you know, just to let things be what they are and let, you know, let everything live, you know, and don't sort of take advantage of that. And then the honor, you know, I think honoring people, showing them that you honor them um, is important. And then exchange, accept, give is kind of, just going on the idea that, you know, I, I know I personally and many people have a hard time accepting help um, and others have a hard time giving it. And, you know, we have to do both. We have to give and, and accept and keep the flow going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and again, you know, when, when we talk about in bringing this back to very fundamental themes of spirituality, it's this idea that, there's a part of ourselves that sort of knows what's best for ourselves, but oftentimes it's our emotional blockages that prevents us from getting there sooner than we could, so to speak. So mm-hmm. by, yeah, by, by, by honoring ourselves, by being able to honor the process and by being able to let be, you know, sort of like let things flow, then mm-hmm. we'll be, we'll be able to take part in that exchanging and accepting and giving process. If that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Definitely. 
for sure. All right, so moving on to number four. So number four, transmute fear. Just let it all go or just let it go. So, yeah, so what, what do we have to say about that one? Well, I think the, the missing part is important there. It's transmute oh, fear. Just feel it, then feel let it. it go. Because I, I think just, that, yeah. um, and I, I honestly, this is almost something that's been a more, like, recent thing over the last couple of years. Because prior to that, when I was learning about the law of attraction and all these different sort of um, when when these things became more mainstream and I was um, understanding that thoughts, you know, really have a bearing on our, our everyday life, I was really pushing out any negativity that I would have at all. Like any time I was scared or whatever, I would just like automatically kind of try to layer over that, um, you know, positive thoughts, positive thinking, whatever, affirmations. And I've found um, through... Actually, one of the best ways that I learned it was through uh, Landmark Education, which I highly recommend to anybody. Um, but just through that process, I, I, I recognized that by not actually, you know, feeling something and, like, letting something come up, whether it's through tears, whether it's mm-hmm. through going to therapy, whether it's, you know, talking to someone that you trust or, or just, you know, screaming, whatever it takes to kind of release that that it is important to let those things be released because we can hold things in our body that we don't even know that they're there. We may have blocked yeah. out, um, you know, we may have very vivid memories of those things and just keep, the more you stuff them down, you know, a problem is only a problem. The wise immortal technique told me once that a problem is only a problem when you can't talk about it. Um, <laughs> so I think it's really important that you feel it. But then, you know, once you've done that, really honoring that at that point when you've lifted it out of yourself that you can let it go, that Mm -hmm. you just really, like, take a almost, whether it's like a physical action of just envisioning, you know, you're throwing it into a trash can or whatever. And you can do it over and over and over again, and it's okay if you have to feel it (laughs) over and over. But the point is, you know, to really recognize that there is an opportunity to transmute our fear. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know obviously you do a lot of energy work, and uh, and then that's you know something we can work with when we talk about sort of like blockages within the chakras that might sort of be building up there because of like emotional stuff that we haven't dealt with. So I mean that's you know just another idea that we can sort of think about in in terms of dealing with this. But one thing I, I was just going to mention, you know, a, a lot of people are afraid of being afraid. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And, and I yeah. think that is actually an issue in today's day and age. So being able to go into an experience and being able to just embrace it fully, you know, just being mm-hmm. able to like take it as it may come, understanding that like the universe is not trying to pick on you, so to speak. It's trying to like refine you in, into like a very, you know, like multifaceted crystal, so to speak. But I mean, mm-hmm. it's a, it, it's going to happen. But if we're constantly resisting the process, then it's just going to take a little bit longer. So, I mean, yeah, to be able to go through free fear and then transmute it into a very real experience, then, yeah, I mm-hmm. think that's, that's always a beneficial thing. And then, like you said, and then being able to, like, let it go and sort of move on to it. I mean, that's an important thing mm-hmm. in itself, right? Any any experience, anything, I mean, whether it be, like, a material object or even, like, an, a relationship, so to speak, that we might have been dealing with. I mean, at some point, we do have to be able to let those things go in order to move forward. Because if we hold on to them, then it will bind us. We will, we will find ourselves yeah. bind to them. And then sort of, again, just holding us back when we don't need to be held back. So, yeah, just simple things to kind of keep in mind there. But this mm-hmm. is cool. I, I, I like this. I, I like just sort of being able to flesh out these ideas here. So, all right, yeah. now <laughs> on, to, uh, on, on to the next one. So number six. So like Toltec function, don't take it personally or make assumptions. So just right. a little background on that. Toltec function, what's that? Um, well, you missed number five, but it's okay. Cause oh, I did. It. Yeah, okay, it's okay. true. It's, yeah. honor, it's honor feminine with an all and let it flow. We know yeah, what that is. We already we talked got about that. that so, it's okay. <laughs> um, so the Toltec function was, um, well, I was referring specifically to the, a lot of the Toltec philosophy that I've become aware of is through um, John Miguel Ruiz. He's a writer. Um, big inspiration to me. He wrote The Four Agreements. And um, that book was very, very, very powerful in a lot of my transformational work. And the two most important, I would say, agreements 
in terms of just kind of really making a breakthrough is to not take things personal or make assumptions. So, like, and that's, like, on every level, an assumption about, you know, what's Brendan thinking right now or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, you know, just literally constantly realizing that we're making assumptions all the time and that we take things personal very easily and to really just notice it and work really hard to not allow those two things to be part of our experience. Mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference. It's like, it's like the world just suddenly starts working. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. For sure. Cool. Cool. All right. So I think, I think you explained that one pretty straightforwardly. So we'll uh, keep things going and uh, yeah, well, so we're on number seven now. So number seven is respect mother earth and all of nature. So I think uh, I think obviously, like, I mean, even though we haven't really gotten into it within this conversation, needless to say, you yourself are like a big proponent of environmentalism and just being mindful of not even just like what we're doing to the earth, but also like what we're doing to our own bodies as well. You know, like uh, something we talked about, like just being mindful of nutrition and stuff. But yeah, again, like what just in your own words, like what what were you thinking when you when you said that commandment? Um, well, I mean, I think, I mean, it is it is what it is. I, I, I believe very strongly, like you said, that we have to be aware. I mean, we are part of the earth. We're made of, you know, we're all made of the same things. And I think um, honoring and respecting the life that we are given through the earth, through water, through food, through air, through all the elements, it's it's very, very powerful when you can do that. And also... Um, protecting, you know, that those resources that we have um, more or less damn near destroyed. You know, I think it's just vital to our to our future. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also there's that level of um, co you know co creating with with Mother Earth. I think that it, she is a being. She is alive. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has something that wants to happen. Um, I actually just finished. A book by my mentor uh, Victoria Hanchen. It's called The Seer and the Sayer, and I, I highly recommend it to anybody that is, is on this path or even just interested in this path. Um, she talks about her um, journey after she committed to being a mouthpiece for Mother Earth, and she has experiences with um, nature spirits and fairy folk, and it's absolutely true. And I lived it with her. Um, throughout the process I'm actually in the book at one point and um, I really believe that um, what she points to in that about our um, ability to work with nature to heal the earth and and heal ourselves is um, absolutely important in the next stage of our development Mm -hmm. in terms of our spiritual and just in general yeah yeah, exactly. Like that's, you know, that's what we're moving into. We're, we're realizing that like we just we're an extension of the everything that is and, and being able mm-hmm. to understand that, you know, and just again, kind of bringing it back. If we want to change the world, we have to sort of like change ourselves in, in, in the process as well, starting with, with ourselves. Now, one thing um, not to just to sort of expand on this, uh, uh, this topic here, because I'm really interested in like the term light warrior is kind of a term that sort of like goes around uh, these days. And and now something I'm trying to think if, if you actually use that term in one of your songs, but, but what I wanted to ask you is that do you yourself uh, think of yourself as a light warrior, so to speak? (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) This is pretty funny. I mean, it would be pretty hard for me to go fully into um, the story behind that and my relationship to the idea of a warrior. Um, well, that's that's that was kind of a but, question in myself, right? Like sort yeah, of re- yeah, re- I mean, redefining what it means to be a warrior, right? Like that doesn't mean yeah, just a yeah. male thing. So go ahead. No, definitely. I I just it's really interesting because when I was in um, when I was in Mexico, I've I've definitely felt like a warrior, and and I mean that in that um, you know since I was little, I've always been. I've always taken everything really seriously and felt like I was um, fighting something and I didn't always understand what it was or or, um, 
what it meant or anything like that. And as I started doing some different, like, past life kind of um, musings and just different people connecting with different people and, and learning my relationship to them and the emotions and thoughts and um, feelings and visions and things that were brought up around that, it's become sort of clear to me that I definitely was sort of in that this warrior energy is a part of me. And um, I would say that what I learned from, from someone who came to, who met me in Mexico, a woman who um, I had a lot of different experiences with, but basically she said that I needed to really realize that the war is over and that, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the soldiers, so to speak, are coming home, the warriors are coming home and that, we actually have to get into ourselves the this idea that it really is like from a like this dimension doesn't feel that way, but that it really the the war was won, and that the work has been done. There's been light workers doing doing magical things for the last um, you know forty years, and that um, we just don't know it yet. <laughs> so it was just really interesting that you asked that question because I've I've been struggling with this idea that. I could, the, you know, it could possibly be over or that my light warring is, is, you know, coming to a close or something like that because it doesn't feel that way mm-hmm. by any means. But at the same time, I think it's an interesting thing to, you know, play around with in my head and, um, you know, be aware of because the truth is that obviously um, we are at a pivotal moment in our history and there definitely is a part of me that feels as though it's, without question going in the direction that I want it to go. And then there's another part of me that feels very strongly that it's going in a direction that I don't want it to go. And so I'm not totally capable of, you know, feeling one way or the other. Like I can just not relax because I I think there's so much to do when a war is over. (laughs) There's a lot to clean up. There's a lot of um, shock and and turmoil and um, rebuilding that needs to happen and, and so, um, you know, either way, I've got I've got a lot of work to do, but I just thought I would. I mean, and that doesn't really. I hope that made sense. It's a it's a really deep theoretical thing that I've been like sort of drowning in um, for quite some time now, due to like some really strong experiences when I was on tour, just like literal people coming to me that knew things about me and conversations that I had, and I mean, it was just like really really heavy stuff and. That's never happened to me before. You know, I've always heard of people talking about having audio, um, audio sort of like vision, you know, guides or angels or whatever. And I've always, you know, I've had a lot of feeling things. I've had a lot of experiences in Reiki and meditation and whatnot. But for the most part, I never had anybody sort of talk to me. And, And it's interesting because I'm such a 3D person in a lot of ways. I had people, like physical people that I still talk to that are, Still connected to me that I met that came up to me and like gave me messages as if they were some sort of you know um, sage or something mm-hmm. like perfect you know so that was that was one that was sort of one of the themes that kept coming through all of these different uh, connections that mm. are these different angels if you will that are real people <laughs> yeah really yeah yeah it's it's always interesting when um, you know, we, we ourselves sort of become like messengers for messages of the consciousness, like of the the universe, because, you know, the universe is always communicating to us through the language of symbols, but it's just a matter of whether or not, like, we're listening and, and, and opening mm-hmm. to, to receive it. And, and not, not to sort of get off topic here, but it's always interesting if you're, if you ever happen to be like in a room with younger kids. And then you just sort of like happen to like overhear some of the things they say. It's just like, do they even realize what they're saying? You know, like sometimes yeah. just like drop the wisest bombs. You're just like, what? Like, <laughs> which is, which, you know, is a, is a topic like maybe we'll get inside a little bit later on the show, but just the importance of being able to like foster uh, these type of thought patterns within our youth, within our children who are going to be, you know, the generation yeah. taking over the mother earth once, uh, once we're gone, so to speak. But all right, so we'll, yeah, we'll move before on. The, before the filters of socialization, yeah. and, you know. Yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to number eight of the commandments, and we got two more after that. So the next one is don't hurry or don't worry. It's using your imagination for what you don't want. Did I get that right? 
Yes, he did. All right, cool, mm-hmm. cool. So, no, I, I mean, I just want to state the obvious there. Like when, when with that line, like I think of like quantum mechanics and like what the bleep do we know sort of like comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Is that sort of what you were coming from when when you sort of wrote that one in there? Um, well, I actually I put it in there because it was um, as one that had a really big impact on me when I was on tour. I met a um, very dear friend, Aaron from Columbus and my first conversation with him, I told him, I just sort of had my moment of transmuting fear where I told him that I was very concerned about um, the, this particular situation that was going on in the tour and whether or not we would be able to do what we needed to do. And he said, he said, don't, don't worry. It's using your imagination for what you don't want. And, you know, obviously I know that um, I've, I, I study that, I write it in my, my music, I refer to that, but the way, you know, that particular way of saying it was just so brilliant and it stuck with me throughout the entire tour. I think of it all the time now, the minute that I start, you know, concerning myself or thinking about things in a, in a, maybe a negative way, I just immediately, you know, think about that. And, um, the hurrying thing I just added because I tend to, hurry and I and I think that that's a general issue in the western world um that we're always trying to move really quickly and get things done as fast as possible and you know that's that's inherently part of this paradigm of you know profit and um you know doing things faster you know competition mm-hmm. etc and so I think that it's really important to to realize that that's not necessarily going to mean that you're more productive or that if you're even thinking about it from a profit perspective, that you're going to be more profitable, whether you're thinking about money or just profitable in terms of love or whatever, it doesn't really work that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and kind of, you know, not just sort of like adding onto what you said, kind of what I was talking about earlier, like the idea that, and this is something you talk about um, in your, in your other lyrics is just that like the experiment is affected by the observer and Mm -hmm. this reality around us is the experiment. So like our observation is sort of changing sort of the outcome of things and and just to sort of put this into practical terms, like, yeah, like for people listening, like energy goes like energy flows where your attention goes. So what you're focusing on, be it positive or negative will come back to you. You know, so just sort of be very mindful of that. And something is sort mm-hmm. of, uh, it, it, some people can sort of use this, take this and, and use it if it works for you. It's something that. Oh, Kelly. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> I'm sure it's uh yeah it's okay now though so but uh, what 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 I was just gonna mention um for, if you if you have a thought in your head uh just this is just something my friend passed on to me he 17 seconds it's a 17 second rule so if there's something like negative in your head like don't think about anything for more than 17 seconds unless you actually want to put like universal energy towards that to like start bringing it back to you so again it's just sort of an ar- arbitrary number to just sort of you know because you might have that there might be something that's bothering you and then you just sort of it comes into your mind and then just sort of let it be there 17 seconds it's not it's not too long and then once that's up sort of let it go again, you know, kind of going back to uh, the fourth commandment out of the 10 that we were talking about and just mm-hmm. you know, sort of feel it and let it go. So, but yeah, I think, uh, I, I think the fact that you actually um, take uh, concepts relating to quantum mechanics and, and bring it into your music is actually a, a very, very cool thing in itself. So that's something that we need more of within the uh, hip hop culture and community, <laughs> in my opinion, mm-hmm. so, at least you're doing it. So. Yeah. All right, now number nine, and uh, then we got number ten, and then after that, we'll uh, we'll we'll go quickly into uh, that story that we were alluding to earlier about that interesting visitation you had, because I'm sure the people tuned into this would be uh, very interested in hearing that experience, and I'm sure they'll be able to learn something from it as well. So okay. we'll get to that in a minute. So number nine out of the list of ten commandments from Kelly is live from your heart and your truth. Or sorry, is there there might be a little bit more to that. What's the full? Yeah, it's um, live from your heart and your truth and don't front. <laughs> okay. um, you know, sometimes I'm I'm trying to rhyme, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's all it's all it's all the same meaning. Basically, just um, you know, if you live from your heart, it's um, you know, ideally you're living from your love space. You're living from um, the unconditional part of yourself and your truth. And don't front is just kind of you know, being honest at the end of the day about about what you feel, you know, whether it is how, you know, your fear or whatever to just kind of be who you are and 
don't try to be anything but that. Mm -hmm. True that, true that. So, yeah, I think, you know, again, kind of thinking back on how we can also reflect on this, like there's a part of ourselves that's like our authentic self and that Mm -hmm. knowing of that is in the heart. So to be able to like live from the heart opposed to living from the head is something that this shift in consciousness is, is all about. And I'm sure many of you listening to this have probably heard that. But for those of you who might be sort of new to these ideas, just sort of keep in mind that like the heart itself like actually has like neurons, so to speak. And, and it's not just this thing that pumps blood. There's actually, you know, there's actually an intelligence to your heart. So to be able to get in tune with your heart, your heart chakra, to be able to feel from it and then to be able to like follow where where you feel drawn to again you know so just yeah simple things but the, you know the, the the little things make a big difference is something i always mm-hmm. say so cool all right so we'll move on to number 10 so number 10 don't let the voice inside stop you you are god gotcha that, that's mm-hmm. the I, it sounds better when you say it though so <laughs> oh you, you had it you had it yeah yeah um whole thing. yeah it's Basically, just, um, you know, we do have a monkey brain in there. It's, you can do a lot of meditation and different things will help slow it down, but it's pretty much going to be there. And I I think it's important to realize that those thoughts do not define you and do not mean anything, really, unless you give them meaning. Mm-hmm. So um, I think the the point being you're you're the god of, you know, we are all divine and it's really about what you choose to think, what you choose to say, what you choose to put your attention on. And, you know, just kind of like, gotcha, like, you know, all along, this mm-hmm. is all under our control, you know, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. But not, like, it's like we're, we're you know, co-creating this with the universe, obviously. I mean, even my, you know, like, these are Ten Commandments that I wrote, but they certainly weren't, you know, um, I can't really take full credit. I take responsibility if somebody doesn't like them or something, but... Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you know, they're they're um, we're all just sort of a channel for the same source of energy. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a very interesting topic in in itself. It's like the idea that by so, sort of uh, using your own Ten Commandments, like you as an artist, sort of open yourselves up to the channel of information that sort of comes through your work. And and I know that's something. If we were to ask other artists, uh, they'll say, you know, they just sort of sit down and start writing, and it just sort of flows through them, kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I think I think that's really cool. But uh, what what I was gonna say just uh, before we move into the next part of the story, like relating to that last commandment there. So the shout out to the dog in the background there. So. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, relating to the monkey brain, just for people keeping this in mind and keeping in mind that we're moving into our meditation soon, the monkey brain is a part of the brain, you know, sort of you can call it the ego. It, it, it's the part that sort of tricks itself into thinking that you are it when it's actually not the case. And, and it's that part of yourself where, just as an example, if someone were to come up to you and they were to say something like really hurtful to you. And then the monkey side of your brain would instantly have a reaction. It would instantly react and it would have an impression and then it would respond right away. What we want to be able to do through things such as meditation is to become more aware of our mind so that when in a a situation like this occurs, rather than having that immediate reaction, we're able to transform our impression so that instead of just immediately, so instead of just immediately saying something right back, we can instead just sort of process it within our mind and then take control over the next actions that follow. So, you know, if, if uh, I, I mean, I, I think I sort of said it straight, straightforward there, but uh, yeah, just keep that in mind that, you know, through, through meditation, like we're, we're working with that. We're like literally sort of reclaiming our own mind from, from the ego, from the monkey mind. So that is so dominant within our culture. And then the last part, uh, it's technically not part of the commandments, but the last part in the lyrics that actually sort of played after that is, uh, in, in, in Kelly's lyrics is, uh, realize we are all divine, pay attention to the signs. I think that's a really Mm -hmm. very cool thing in itself. So yeah, for sure. So for anybody who's listening to this, I'm sure there was probably something in particular that, that Kelly said, or either I myself said that might have particularly resonated with you or really struck a chord with something that you might be going through at this personal moment in your life. And if that's the case, then that means that you are listening to the show for a reason. 
and, and that's a that's a good reason. So sort of take something from it. And uh, another suggestion I would just say is uh, go write your own Ten Commandments. I mean, th- these are Kellys. Like, who's, who's you know? I think we should all sort of like create our own our own rules to sort of not live by, but just sort of be mindful of through our day to day life. Yeah. So, for sure. Cool. All right. So That's like nice. I said, um, or Kelly, did you have anything else to add on to that, or should we move into that? No, I think that super that funky really story. Was, no, that was a really great, um, mm-hmm. you know, explanation of the monkey brain and some good, uh, nice reminder. I love hearing people talk about the same things in different yeah. ways. It's like it's just beautiful to, you know, like I said, the imagination line that my friend said to me, and then it sticks with you. You know, mm-hmm. we're always we're always in this process. So you did a great job explaining things. Thank you. No, no problem. So yeah, I mean that's the whole idea, right? Like we we're all we're all part of the collective experiencing itself from different perspectives. So see, mm-hmm. I, I can I can rhyme too, Kelly. <laughs> I like that. Let's let's do a. I like that work. a lot. We're all part of the collective, experiencing yeah. it from different perspectives. That's hot stuff. If you want to work that into a song in the future, let me know. We can uh, do a project <laughs> together. I'm down for that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Definitely. All right, cool. So, well, uh, like I said, we'll we'll do the meditation in a couple minutes. But before we get there, um, let's, uh, yeah, just just if you can sort of give the short version of it. Can can you share the story that we talked about earlier about that interesting uh, sort of sleep paralysis visitation experience that you had, but not for the purpose of sort of freaking out our audience, but just sort of, sort uh-huh. of give them your own experience. So, because I'm sure a lot of people here have had something similar. They might not really mm-hmm. have a way of processing it. So just uh, without really needing to say more, yeah, just sort of introduce us to the story that you have to share. Okay. Well, um, so I'll just give like a quick sentence or two background that um, I had become aware of the idea that we were, as a um, collective, part of the shift that we're going through is this movement from um, the love of power to the power of love and that this sort of lives in terms of our body and our chakras, you know, as as above, so below, kind of it's in our body as well. So we're going from our third chakra, which is the solar plexus, to the heart. Um, so the power, the love of power is really in that, focused in that um, part of your body, the third chakra. And this relates to the meditation too, so it's good for me to explain this, I suppose, now. Mm. Um, and then the, you know, fourth chakra is, is your heart, which is, the, love, the power of love. So um, I had become aware of this idea. I had also become aware of the idea that this um, there's actually they say that that particular chakra on the earth um, uh, is is called in the part of the earth that it is. I think it's um, near South America. I'm pretty sure, and they call it the knot of Vishnu, and that it's literally a knot. And I was reading in this book, unplugging the patriarchy, that this knot is 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 literal for many people in their bodies that there is actually a knot of kind of you know the angst that we have the anxiety etc is there and then i had a massage and um a, the man who was doing the massage told me that i needed to get some myofascial release that i really did have like a mass of energy in my third chakra and that i would probably have a lot of emotional turmoil when it actually happened and and this was at post, you know, my father passing away, which I, I didn't mention, and I tried to find my birth mother. I just had a lot of things going on all at the same time, and I knew that it would be a painful thing. And also, I was doing a certain type of yoga called Bikram Yoga. It's hot yoga where I was doing certain poses, and I was feeling this mass, like, beating. And so this all was happening within, like, a two- or three-month period in my life. And one night I was sleeping, and I woke up from sleep, and I couldn't move at all, and I felt like various kind of like tubes going from different parts of my body. I felt something in my mouth, and I felt something across my abdomen, and I was very very scared at first, um, and just mostly at not being able to move and feeling these sort of foreign objects around me, and then I saw um, sort of this shadowy kind of beings walking very quickly or moving very quickly beside my bed and then they sort of it was obvious that they were aware that I was aware of them and um, I felt fear but then I started just immediately had this sense of them being my friends and I started saying out loud you're my friends you're my friends and 
as I was saying this, they started um, like an, a like sort of shadow object that looked almost like a sledgehammer. They started just kind of like slamming it into my abdomen. And I just kept saying, you're my friends, you're my friend. I felt no pain or anything of that nature. At that point, I wasn't feeling any fear. I just wanted to move. That's all I really was thinking about, that I wanted to be able to move. And um, within, I don't know, maybe five, ten seconds, I sort of finally shook a little bit more and moved. And I sat up, and there was nobody, you know, nothing in my room. I felt this presence had left, and I got up, and I was all alone in a house that normally had six people in it. So that was, like, a little bit bizarre that no one was in the home. All my friends were out. My roommates were out. And um, basically what I discovered after that was that this really was um, – it was, in fact, a visitation of energy. You could call it alien. You could call it energy. You could call it dimensional, you know, my higher self. You know, you could call it a lot of different things. I was definitely awake. And this was not a dream or anything like that. And um, I believe that they were actually breaking apart my mass in my belly and in my, in my um, uh, solar plexus. So I think that... Um, it was kind of, I think it was asking for it in a lot of ways. I was so aware of this, this issue that I had. I was so aware of all of this. And, and, and keep in mind that I all these things happening, I hadn't drawn a link between them at all. I had just, they all sort of happened separately. And I was like, oh, that's funny. That's a thing. I hadn't realized that this all happened until after this experience. And I felt some strangeness in my in my body for the next day or two but I can definitely say that moving forward I felt a lot of release and I, I felt quite different actually so um, that was the story and I've talked to a lot of my mentors and my mind uh, teacher about it and um, you know just related to the fact that they were shadowy you know that, that mm-hmm. was that bad could they have been bad you know things like that and and um, my Mayan uh, teacher actually said that, you know, things that move very, very quickly or of a very high frequency can sometimes look dark because they are moving really quickly. And, you know, dark doesn't mean bad, um, mm-hmm. you know. So, so yeah, I, I, I see it as a, a positive thing. And I definitely felt very strongly that that was a very important thing that needed to happen for me to continue to do what I'm here to do. For sure, for sure. And there's uh, actually one of the lines in your lyrics from, I think it's a uh, Google female rapper, is uh, mm-hmm. to honor to honor our dark, to enter our light. There is nothing out mm-hmm. there. It's all our own fright. So yeah. that sort of goes in with that. Now, did you write yeah. that? Was that lyric written before or after that experience? Um, I mean, I say that, that in different ways a lot in different True. things that I don't, I'm not even really sure, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. But yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> it, it, it would be interesting because uh, out of all the people in sort of like the hip hop community culture and stuff, I'm sure you're not the only one who's had some sort of like trippy experience like that, but it's good <laughs> that you yourself are actually open to talking about it and to be able to like mm-hmm. put, help put some sort of context on it. Cause I mean, yeah, I'm sure some of our listeners have had some crazy sleep paralysis experiences, but I mean, yeah, you know, you don't have to mm-hmm. always see it as a negative thing, even though our, our, again, our monkey mind might be very sort of overwhelmed by the experience at the time. So give yourself a moment yeah. to sort of process it and, yeah, yeah, but again, I could say like you know if it's one thing or another, but it definitely happens, mm-hmm. so that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. All right, so Kelly, I think we're uh, ready to move into our meditation. So now, obviously, you yourself are quite familiar with meditation. So for everybody who's listening to this, the way that we're going to do this, Kelly is going to verbally sort of set you up, get you comfortable, say some things that she feels are appropriate to say from her heart, and then we'll play an audio track, and then just within that silence, allow yourself to meditate, and then Kelly will bring you back. And then from there, 
for anybody who's looking to get a chance to actually join us on air to ask Kelly a question, this is your chance to do so. So once the meditation is over, feel free to call into the show using Skype or actually using a regular phone. And you can call in with the host number of 347-539-5493. So 347-539-5493. So whatever works for you. So, all right. Now, Kelly, are we uh, all good to get ready to move into our meditation then? Yes, definitely. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So, again, just sort of giving me a cue to say, Brendan, play the music, and then I'll do that. But for the time being, it's all you. And the, the meditation track that we're using is going to be a singing bowl audio track, and it is correlating to the solar plexus chakra. So, appropriate with that last story. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself. So, Kelly, it's all you. Okay. Here we go. All right. So let's um, first let's just get in tune with our breath and the rainbow spectrum that we all live in that refers to our chakras. So um, we'll just do a series of breaths here, and I'm going to lead you from the bottom of our body to the top. So you take a deep breath in. And as you're breathing in and out, I want you to just envision the bottom part of your body from the top of your legs all the way down to your feet. If you're laying down, if you're sitting, it doesn't matter. As just a very bright red. And as you're breathing in and out, I want you to really envision that that red is expanding and contracting as you breathe. And then I want you to move up to your belly, just below your navel, your sacral chakra, which is orange. And as we're doing this, going up our body, I want to really keep the colors. The red stays in the same place. And now just envision that orange as you're breathing in and out, that you're really breathing in and out of that particular area. And then we can move up to the solar plexus, which is a bright yellow like the sun. And again, just really breathing in and out of that yellow. And then we can move up to the heart chakra. It's a bright green, like leaves on a tree. Just breathe into the green and out right into that area in the center of your chest. And then we move to our throat. Just imagine the blue sky surrounding your throat chakra, breathing in and out. And then we move to our third eye. It's a beautiful violet color. And just envision that you're literally breathing with your third eye. And last but not least, your crown chakra, which connects you to the heavens. It's a bright white light, very pure. And now if you can sort of keep all of that those colors alive and really think of it as if anything that you maybe is not serving you as you're breathing is leaving the bottom through the red into the earth, in the center of the earth. And that you're bringing in from the center of the universe through the white light into the crown of your head anything that you need anything that may serve you more. And now if you can just drop down to your solar plexus, to the yellow. And there's a space that is just in between the green and the yellow of your heart and your sacral chakra. And if we can just sort of attune ourselves with that area that is the area that we are all as a species as a universe 
that we are, or at least the galaxy, that we are trying to move from this yellow to the green. And so while we play this music that Brendan has, I want to envision that as we breathe in, that we are sort of pulling ourselves into that yellow and that anything that we feel is not working for us, whether it's a relationship or a situation or an idea that we just can't seem to be okay with, it can be small, it can be big, but if we can just kind of breathe and put that scenario, that person, that thing into that yellow space. And then as we breathe out, I want you to envision that it goes from the yellow into the green. And as it exits your heart, it is filled with that pure green, unconditional love. So you breathe in and you allow yourself to go to that place and then you release it through your heart. And I would say spend the first few moments really getting clear as the bulls start with what those things are. You can just choose one thing or you can choose many and really make a commitment with this breath to feel it and then heal it through the exhale. And then midway through, about, I would say, 10 or 20 breaths, really just focus on the color and let the colors be all that there is. And as the thoughts come or concerns come or sounds come from your environment, just focus on breathing in yellow and breathing out green. And Brendan, whenever you're ready.
If you gently just want to bring your awareness back to your breath, Kelly, you can continue to lead them out of this. Okay, thank you. So we're going to just really put um, all of your inhale and exhale focus completely on your heart. Literally breathing in and out of your heart. Really noticing your heartbeat as you breathe. And then just sort of take a moment to, as you're breathing and you can continue to see the green, just take a moment to really feel in that space. Feel unconditional gratitude. Feel love. Feel peace. Feel joy. Let's just take a few deep breaths together. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. No um, problem. So, I'll just say it now, just in case we find ourselves short on time at the end of the show, but the light within me honors and respects the light within you. So, namaste. Namaste. <laughs> that was very cool. Yeah, that, um, that solar plexus track is really intense actually and that was actually um i'm sure some of you actually felt that doing that meditation but uh one of the things that stood out to me um when you were walking us into that when when you were talking about you said breathe with your third eye i really like that i like that idea because i mean that's something when it comes to meditation we want to be able to work with both the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So we want to be able to to have something to focus on, which is why we do, we do that. We allow ourselves to focus on the breath. And, and I think being able to focus on the visualization of breathing with our third eye is something that I'm, I'm actually going to use. I'm, I'm going to bring that into my practice. So thank you. That was very cool. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Awesome. Yeah, I actually want to um, just mention Go ahead. The, the, the where that came from or one of the reasons that I said that was um, in HeartMath is an organization that talks about the technology and the um, amazing organ that is our heart and, and one of the three, like the steps to really um, become into heart-focused living and, you know, lower stress levels and all those good things is is one is to actually realize your heart and become aware of your heart, and then mm-hmm. it's to breathe with your heart, like mm-hmm. like literally seeing the breath coming in and out, and then it's to focus on the feeling of you know gratitude or whatever. And and I think that that can really be applied to any of the chakras, like yeah, you know these studies mm-hmm. of what each chakra kind of represents. I think it's really valuable to think of, um, and that's kind of what I was pointing to is you know just really as you're envisioning the colors, like thinking of them as, you know, inhaling, exhaling that color yeah. has been really, really powerful for me in different different types of situations. For sure. So thank you to everyone who's been tuned into the show so far and, and who has taken part in that synchronized meditation. And even for those of you who are listening to the show in the future and, and a recording of it, because... Uh, just uh, we we kind of say this here and there, but there's always that energy that's attached to that moment that still exists within the recording. So, you know, time is kind of an illusion. So by being able to do it wherever and whenever you are, you're still taking part in in that collective experience that we just shared together. Be- and thanks to Kelly for for guiding us through it. So that was very cool. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. No problem. All right. So we do have only about six 
minutes left in the show right now. So I actually do have one person uh, who will bring on to the air. It's our friend Vaughn. And Vaughn's actually been on the air a few times, and he actually does a lot of uh, lyrical hip-hop stuff himself. So I think he might have a question ready for you. Vaughn, if you do have a question, just sort of think of it now, and, and we'll pass that on to Kelly. And, and I'm not sure if we'll have any other callers on the air. I don't see anybody else in the queue right now, which is fine. So, But just another thing I just wanted to mention, and just in case we sort of find ourselves short within the last couple of minutes, those of you who heard me mention at the beginning of the show the Be Brave uh, fundraising campaign. At this very moment of this live broadcast, they are within three thousand dollars of reaching their goal. And if they do that, then they get like a lot more of the money, opposed to a good ten percent of it going to Indiegogo. So for anybody who's listening to this. After the show is done, go check out the Indiegogo campaign and support what you can. So it's indiegogo.com slash be hyphen brave, or you can go to facebook.com slash be brave movie. So again, that's a project that we just wanted to help support. And within these last two hours, like right now, like this is, this is a, this is down to the last second and, and a win for this project is a win for all of us working out there to shift consciousness because this is a really big project. So thank you uh, to whoever just posted it in a live chat there. So, and for any of you listening to the show in the future, check out their Facebook page as well. I'm sure you'll hear plenty more about the project. So that said, and uh, of course, join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio. If you have not yet. And for the new listeners, tune into our show next week and uh, check out Kelly's stuff at Kelly maze.com. So K E L L E E M A I Z E.com. And she's got lots Lots of free tracks on there to download, which is a whole thing we didn't even get into. The fact that you release a lot of your music for free online, which is a wonderful thing in itself. So very much appreciate. So that yeah. pretty much says it all. And again, everyone, ParadigmShiftCentral.com is the one. Hey everyone, Skull Babylon here. This is a recording after after the show ended. For some reason, the internet gods turned off my connection with only a couple minutes left in the show, but things were already wrapped up anyways. A huge thank you for Kelly for being on the show, and a big thanks to all her fans who tuned in and got connected with the Paradigm Shift communities. As already mentioned, join Paradigm Shift Radio on Facebook at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio, and feel free to add me as well at facebook.com slash Skull Babylon. Help share this episode to promote Kelly's music and to promote the Paradigm Shift global community. Tell your friends about Paradigm Shift Radio. Consider starting up a Paradigm Shift community where you are. Be the change you want to see in the world, and we'll see you in the future. Namaste. You can remove all obstacles. Anything is possible. Together we are unstoppable. Anything is possible. You can remove all obstacles. Anything is possible Together we are unstoppable You can pray the devil back to hell Water, peace, fear to love the sick made well Now what are you going to do To make sure your dreams come true Anything is possible You can remove all obstacles Anything is possible Together we are unstoppable You can pray the devil back to hell He's here to love the sick made well Now what are you going to do To make sure your dreams come Make sure your dreams come true.